Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Hannover Fair, Hydrogen and Fuel Cells Europe. We have lots of high-class presentations, and we continue with a presentation about leak testing and automated stacking, the key to efficient production of fuel cells. And the speaker will be the industry, industry manager of e-mobility of Zeltwanger, and it's Patrick Reich. Please come to the stage and give him a little applause. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm very glad to be here to represent uh, Zeltwanger and to talk today about the leak testing process and also the automated stacking process. First of all, I want to give you um, a short introduction to the Zeltwanger Group. The Zeltwanger Group uh, is structured in a holding with two sections, one being contract manufacturing. That's where we do manufacturing services, so any um, CNC milling and drilling process as well as assembly. Uh, for prototypes and small batches. And on the right side, that's what I will focus on today, will be industrial solutions. That's where we develop and manufacture devices for the industry um, with core competencies, one being leak testing and automation. That's what we are going to talk about today. Another one is laser robotic applications for the process of laser. And last but not least, um, assembly machines for thermal management products. We are about 450 employees. Uh, were founded 40 years ago by Mr. Zeltwanger, who is uh, shown here in this picture. Here you see now the process chain uh, for the manufacturing of fuel cells. Uh, you see that we start with a metal strip. We have a coating process. We have a forming process. We have um, potentially a laser cutting process um, for metallic bipolar blades, a laser welding process. And then we have to make sure that the laser weld is leak tight. So we have a leak testing process. Um, potentially a sealing process, putting on the gasket. And then, last but not least, we have the, the, the final bipolar blade. And then we will manufacture the fuel cell stack and later on the fuel cell system. And I will talk today about the leak testing process and the stacking process due to the time. What I want to mention here, Susan uh, just talked about it, is the German Fuel Cell Corporation. That's where we cooperate with the company Wild Technology um, and also von Ardenne being three experts to really cover the whole spectrum of fuel cell manufacturing. So first of all, I want to start with the leak testing process um, for three main um, parts. One being the bipolar blade, but the leak testing of bipolar blades. Another one being leak testing compression of fuel cell stacks. And last but not least, also of fuel cell systems. When we talk about the leak testing process, there are basically two groups of leak testing. There's the conventional leak testing process, usually air is used here, and we have a pressure decay, relative differential pressure decay method, and a mass flow method. If we want to reach even lower leak rates or also localize potential leaks, we have to go over and, and switch to tracer gases. A very common tracer gas is helium, for instance, and also here we have different options. We have the accumulation method, vacuum method, as well as the sniffing method. Here you have the three me methods again. Like I said, the sniffing method has the big advantage that you will actually localize leaks. So you don't only detect leaks, you also localize leaks. The vacuum test is the one that's being used for bipolar blades most of the times if helium is needed because leak rates are very low. When we talk about Pressure decay tests, um, similar also mass flow tests. You see a typical test sequence here on the right side. You fill the part to a desired pressure. You have a stabilization time to make sure there are no temperature influences anymore. When you have that, when you have a linear decrease of pressure over time, then you can start with your measuring process, and then you, you start to measure the pressure drop over time. And if you multiply it by the volume, you will then receive your leak rate. 
if the leak rate you're detecting is higher than the limit, uh, the leak, leakage limit, then of course the part is not okay. If it's below, then it is okay. Now, what needs to be leak tested? Leak testing is a very important process for fuel cells. Uh, the fuel cell system must be leak tight. The fuel cell stacks must be leak tight. You have an anode, you have a cathode side, you have a cooling channel. All of those must be leak tight. The membrane electrode assemblies must be leak tight. The end plates and so on. So basically everything needs to be leak tight and therefore, of course, also leak tested. When we talk about bipolar blades, there are different options. You see here now a semi-automatic um, leak test station for testing of bipolar blades. This one you can actually see at our booth D63. So if you're interested, come over and we can actually show you this process. It's a sliding carriage to test single or two bipolar blades at one time. If we want to go down to even lower cycle times, we have to go to more automated um, machines um, where we test more than one blade, more than two blades, depending on the cycle time. And then we have different concepts like this cell, for instance. But of course, it always depends on what type of gas we have to use, what leak rates we have, and uh, what cycle times we want to achieve. When we talk about fuel cell stacks, here we need to compress the stack first, so we use usually um, servo presses. We have to do a leak test of the different channels. We have an anode test, cathode channel. We have an external test usually, uh, and uh, all of that needs to be done after the compre compression of the stack. And this can be done in a leak testing station like you see here, just options. And on the left side, you have a standardized uh, sniffing test station where you can actually localize leaks, for instance, for fuel cell systems or also electrolyzers. Now talking really quick about the automated assembly of uh, fuel cells. Uh, today I will just focus on the, on the stacking system um, due to the time. Um, but of course we also have uh, solutions for system assembly, fuel cell system assembly, and also uh, other components like the end blades or media modules. What are the basic requirements for a fuel cell stacking machine? No? On the one side, you want to be quickly. You want to have short cycle times, of course. So speed is very critical. You want to be quick, especially for the future. And therefore, we created a system that can uh, achieve cycle times for each cell. Yeah? So one bipolar blade and one MEA in three seconds. Yeah? So part handling for one part in 1.5 seconds. And in order to do that, we have to do the optical inspection on the fly. Why do we need optical inspection? Because we need to be very accurate when we, when we place the, the components on top of each other. Usually, we have requirements of accuracies up to 0.1 millimeters in every dimension. Uh, so we have to be very accurate, and therefore, we need the optical inspections, and they have to be done on the fly to be that quick. Usually, you have two optical inspections, once when you grab them at the feeding unit, but also when you place them on the fuel cell stack, on the stacking assembly. And also, what I think is very important at the moment is the term of flexibility. You want to be flexible. Yeah, today, you don't have the production rates as you have in five years. Also, your designs will change. Your, your, your dimensions of the, of the fuel cell stacks uh, will change. So we made sure that you have a system here that's also flexible for later use for different um, dimensions. Here, just a different picture. Uh, you see here on the right side, we have um, uh, the component feeding, uh, fully automatic uh, feeding unit for the components, for the bipolar blades, for the MEAs, uh, but, but also for the, for the end plate. Like I said, with an optical inspection for the position adjustment, um, we can also implement air conditioning, especially for the MEAs. If that's needed, we can implement that as well. We can do a, a separator foil, peeling if that's needed. Then here you see basically the robots that we use. Uh, this is where we st stack um, the fuel cell stack or electrolyzer. We will have here a height compensation for optimized stacking. We have also here, like I said, the optical inspection and also a tolerance monitoring. And last but not least, on the, on the back here is our stack tensioning unit where we 
tension the stack, uh, or we, where we compress the, sta the stack and also tension the stack after a successful leak test. Yeah, but cannot go too much into detail, yeah, but like I said, you can visit us our, at our booth and then we talk about it. Here you see some scaling options. If you want to receive even lower cycle times, you can multiply, mul multiply, your, multiply your, your stacking systems, put them basically on a belt or mirror them even, and therefore reduce your cycle time, time by, by time and therefore be scalable. Yeah, and this is uh, all for the moment. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. You will find us at booth um, D63 here in this hall, um, together with our partners, Von Adene, as, as well as uh, Wild Technology. And I'm really looking forward to answering your questions and to talk to you later as well. Thanks a lot for this very interesting presentation. Thank you. And if there's any question right now, we have got time for one or two questions. Everything One answered. Or two questions. <laughs> no. So, you said the booth number is T63? Correct. Thanks a lot. Thank you, too.